Hoopla. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. It's an opportunity for me to have a spiritual conversation with uh, various guests that come on the show. We usually are talking about a topic relating to spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, or more. And today, as my special guest, I have with me Jennifer Roach King. Thanks for being here today, Jen. Well, actually, yeah. we call Jennifer NIF, <laughs> affectionately called NIF. So thanks for being here today, NIF. <laughs> Thank you. And I will tell you a little bit about NIF and uh, our topic today. It's an opportunity for you to tune in, like I said, on a weekly basis to my show. I encourage you to look back at the archive videos of the show on my Facebook page, Willow White Medium. This also goes out on the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page, as well as Blog Talk Radio. Uh, there are other shows that go out weekly for Lilydale, so I encourage you to take a look at those, all kinds of different hosts and topics that are happening throughout the week. And today on Wednesdays with Willa, our topic is who is Leolin? Today, we're gonna to be uncovering the mystery of Leolin. And we, as I said, I have my special guest today is Jennifer Roach King, and uh, she's retired. She lives in the Adirondack State Park, and she loves Lilydale. Uh, you've been coming to Lilydale since 1975, you said, right? Yes, so that's true. about 46 years have passed by. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought? And, and that's what happens when people come to Lilydale. It becomes a pilgrimage every summer to be here in this special place with all of these great people and this opportunity to learn and grow together with spirit. So NIF has been a, a friendly face in the past. She's helped people uh, by driving a tram and getting people into different locations. And uh, you really enjoy looking at all the little facets of Lilydale and details. So she's a perfect person to share with us uh, this research. So Neff, let's tell them what and who is Leolin. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. Pretty much uh, like when you're driving down Dale Drive, coming into Lilydale, you drive past on your left, the Leolin Inn, and on your right is the Leolin Woods. And for people that have never been to Lilydale, it's um, it's a hamlet, and it's uh, beside the Cassadaga Lakes. There's three of them, upper, middle, and lower. Um, it's in western New York. It's in Chautauqua County. It's in the town of Pomfret in the village of Cassadaga. And it's actually an island. And... As you're approaching Lilydale, you know, you pass by two things, Leolin. And I don't think I really knew who Leolin was for many, many years. Like you said, I've been coming here like, you know, since 1975 or so. So I, I did a bit of, little bit of research. And what I found to begin with was like um, the Leolin Woods was like a 20 acre act of, uh, it's a tract of virgin old growth forest. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about, thousand years old it has like 18 different varieties of mammoth trees um classed as veterans by the state department of forestry um yes just, we've uh, had foresters come in and they're just amazed at these big thick trees that some are what two three hundred years old yeah three four hundred years old yeah in the and grounds really they're actually thousands of years old Yes, and, uh, and so if you're familiar with Lilydale, it's the path out to Inspiration Stump. You, when you are on that path and headed toward Inspiration Stump, you have entered the Leolin Woods. And then when you get to Inspiration Stump, you have all these beautiful trees, this canopy of trees. I call it an outdoor cathedral. It is. Yes, and that's where we do one of the message services uh, that's, that happens daily here in in Lilydale. So yes, please continue. <laughs> I get well, excited. Okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. Well, um, and then on top of like the beautiful woods that's there that's named Leolin Woods, mm -hmm. um, as you come by that's on your right, right side is the woods. On the left side is the Leolin Inn. And all I knew about that really, it was the original homestead of 
the Aldens, the people that, you know, let all the free thinkers and spiritists come to Lilydale for the picnics to begin with. So I'm like, you know, like, who is Lee Olin? So I went to the museum and I talked to Ron Nagy and Ron Nagy goes, oh, that's Abigail Pettengill's granddaughter. And she had named the woods in the inn after Leola. So I was like, oh, that's really interesting. And then they opened up the uh, Welcome Center this year mm -hmm. over at the Leola Inn. So I went over there and Francesca was the lady that was working there. And um, she showed me on the wall the little family tree that they had on there, how it was Abigail, Pat and Gil and Charles. And then they had four children. And one of their children was Josephine. And Josephine had Leolin. So I had like, I, I just took a picture with my camera of the little family tree they had on there. And I decided I would start a little family tree and see if I could look at census information and stuff like that. And that's kind of how, how it all started like the whole adventure began like the, the ball started rolling you, your mind just started percolating and you said i need to research this more and more and more <laughs> and right. so the leolin is uh one of two hotels that are part of lilydale there's the maplewood hotel that a lot of people are familiar with that they might go sit and rock and on a rocker and look at the lake but the leolin has the benefit of being right there on dale drive and it also has a, a lake view, a lake access that people really enjoy sitting next to. And it kind of has slightly different accommodations from the Maplewood Hotel. And to take you back in time, as Niff was talking about, it was the old Alden farm. And they were so generous to let people come to the shores of Casadega, uh, the spiritual group that had been based in Le uh, Leona, another L, <laughs> Leona, New York. And uh, eventually this became established as a summer camp so that people could come on a yearly basis and really share, and not, not just the free thinkers, but people who wanted to bring forth spiritualism in a, in a beautiful, big way. And so this family tree that Niff's talking about, Abigail Pettengill, she was a very important lady in Lilydale. And I know you've got some great stories about her and then how to, how we got to her granddaughter. <laughs> Correct, because it all seems to go back to Abigail, like who is Leolin. So yes. um, I'm going to do a little screen share with you right here, just for a second. Um, I've never done this, so we'll see how this works on here. Let's see here and share. Can everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. So I started a little family tree um, for Leolin. And down here at the bottom, you can see there's Leolin Louise Everett was her last name. And she married Timothy Spellman. Leolin's mother, which was Abigail's daughter, her name was Josephine. All right. And then Josephine's parents were Abigail Burnham, Pattengill. And she had married this Charles Pattengill. So now I kind of had like a little family tree. And if you look down here on the bottom, the second level and the third, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you can see how it goes from Abigail to Josephine to Leolin. Right. Okay. So Abigail is actually. Abigail Pettengill is actually a Wheelock. And the Wheelocks go all the way back to the Pilgrims. And he was the reverend and started um, Dedham, Massachusetts and stuff, okay? Back in Pilgrim times. Mm -hmm. They were all fleeing England for the Church of England to go to the United, you know, to come to the New World here. So she has quite a history on her own, the women up the side of Matilda Wheelock, who was Abigail's mother. And then you've got Willard Burnham, who were also, they drove ships and things like that, like during the 1800s. Mm -hmm. Matilda Wheelock had Abigail, 
and Abigail had a sister, Emily, and another one, Eliza, and Caroline, and George, and Harriet, okay? Because it's going to come back to this. It, it comes right back to Abigail, okay? So when Abigail has Josephine, Josephine marries Henry Everett, and I start doing the family tree because I'm like, well, how did Leolin get to where she was? What did her mother do? So I did a little bit of research on Leolin's mother. And uh, Josephine, it said, from the census information and all, was a philanthropist in the Los Angeles area who helped and found the Hollywood Bowl Symphony. She was like the major financer for the Hollywood Bowl Symphonies. And she lived in Pasadena, California for like 20 years. Um, she was president of the Pasadena Community Playhouse. She worked with Oscar Wilde. Like that, you know, he was an Irish poet and playwright who lived in London in the 1890s. Um, she was on the board of the Los Angeles Philharmonic Orchestra, the Pasadena Civic Orchestra, um, and art institutes all across the United States when people were still going like horse and buggy and train. They didn't even have cars, really. Um, she was on boards like many, many things. She had probably the choicest collection of artwork in the United States. She always was a philanthropist and helped like prominent artists, people like that she thought was like up and coming. Mm -hmm. And um, the residence that her father lived in, that Josephine lived in, um, was next to the Hotel Vista. And they had a huge auditorium that they have exhibitions for art and they would invite music notables there. And I was like, wow, this is an awful lot of money to be building civic centers and all this stuff. So I started looking at a little bit of some of the works that Lee Olin's mother did. And let alone like working with Oscar Wilde. Um, she also worked with um, Arthur Sullivan of the famous Gilbert and Sullivan. And they did a Victorian era theatrical called The City of Light in 1907, set in Lilydale, New York. Right? And it was the music of um, Arthur Sullivan. He was a composer and he had a partnership with um, Gilbert, who was like a dramatist. So I thought, Wow, these people were like Hollywood stars in the Vic Victorian era, right? When, you know, sure. like, wow, look at what Leolin's mother did. That was Abigail's daughter. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why? With all this stuff, I wonder what Leolin's father did. And Leolin's father's name was Henry A. Everett. Okay, so we've gone to Everett. Henry Everett. Now, I, when I started looking at Henry Everett, an odd thing started happening in my family tree. It created a circle and duplicates, and I had to keep undoing it and redoing it. <laughs> so, spirit tells me Abigail's sister had mar married Azariah Everett, and they had a son, Henry. Abigail's daughter, Josephine, married her sister, Emily's son, Henry. So I'm going to click the family tree that I'm sharing right now, where you can mm -hmm. see here's Leolin, mm -hmm. there's Josephine and Henry. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'm going to go up to Emily, who is Abigail's sister, and I'm going to click on that. Now you can once again see, now we're looking at, you know, a different part of the family. Now we're looking at Abigail's sister. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Let's see if I can get Abigail. I'm just going to go over here for a second so you can see Abigail is still in the tree. Okay. Yes. There's Abigail and Charles with George, Charles, Josephine, who's Leon's mother, and then Isabel. And Isabel yes. was also very much interested in Lilydale mm -hmm. and did many, many things. So, Abigail's sister, Emily. Emily, right here, married Azariah Everett. And those were Henry's parents. So Josephine's mom was sisters with Henry's mom, which made Josephine and Henry first cousins. So Leolan's parents were first cousins. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, where did Henry get all the money? You know what I mean? Just like the, the Pettengills, like, because it, it's streaming on down, like where it came from. Turns out that Abigail's sister, Emily, married Azariah Everett, who was an eye doctor um, in Cleveland, who also owned um, brand new were railroads and he owned a railroad um as well as being a doctor and his brother was an eye doctor and they were very prominent um azariah everett was the first professor of ophthalmology at the cleveland medical school all the way back in the 1800s him and his brother had a partnership well when they um, had uh, children, the children all worked. They gave them like jobs. It was pretty interesting. So Henry Everett, which was Josephine's husband, Leolin's father, Henry Everett was very interested in electricity and um, traction and wanted to get away from steam railways to electric streetcars. So he was really into lighting, electric, and streetcars. And as I look back, um, I, I, I'll come back when I get to Abigail at the very end of all the things that these people did for Lilydale, like, like what they did and built. So really, they were very, very prominent people. Uh, um, so I'm going to go back. I just wanted to show you the link in the family tree, mm -hmm. um, how the Everett's and the Pattengills are like yeah. connected yeah. more so than in most families. And it was a common thing to do back then. It really was. I do ancestry. People did do that. And how I found out that they were first cousins was I found an article about where they got married. Henry Everett and his father, Ezra Everett, were from Brooklyn, New York. The Pattengills were from Cleveland, Ohio. And it was illegal to marry your first cousin in New York. So they couldn't get married in Brooklyn, where the railroad tycoons were. They had to get married in Ohio because it was legal there, okay? So along the way, um, Josephine, Leolin's mother, Josephine and Henry, the railroad tycoon, um, they had three kids. They had, in 1887, they had an infant son, like in July of that year, um, it died on the, he died on the same day, mm -hmm. and I cannot find a name like anywhere in the records. I find like the birth certificate and death certificate, but I, I don't know his name, so I just have it on here as infant son Everett. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorothy was born uh, the very next year, or I mean, Yolan was born the very next year. Mm -hmm. Then Dorothy was born in 1892. And when I looked up Leolin's sister, Dorothy, she um, was the director of the Everett Stone Company. So she lived in this place called Kirtland. So I looked up 
Kirtland and did some information. It was like a 400 acre um, estate that Josephine and Henry owned. And it is now the Kirtwood uh, Country Club. They lived in a castle and the castle is now the clubhouse for this uh, very prominent um, golf course out in Willoughby, Ohio, which is right near Cleveland. And that, as a matter of fact, is where Leolin and her husband got married. Where it's, and the name of the place is the Leo Doro Farm. And after doing some research, Josephine and Henry named the estate after Leolin and Dorothy. It's the Leo Doro farm. And then Leolin is married there. So that's pretty much what I've got, like with the family tree, mm -hmm. um, as far as Abigail and she has been, they've been, you know, in the United States since the pilgrims, um, who had Josephine, who was the philanthropist, who married a railroad tycoon. And that's who Leolin's parents were. Okay. Nice. So, um, now, when I look at things uh, is like why things are named or Leola, and they said that Abigail had done that. Doing some research, what I found out about Abigail, uh, she was on the board of directors um, since the 18, I got the dates here for a second. Let me see if I, uh, I can't remember the dates offhand right at this second, but she was, um, she was president of Lilydale Assembly from 1903 to 1906. So and, can we take it off of screen share for a bit? Oh, certainly. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. Great. That was great info. <laughs> yeah. So um, oh, let's see. I lost my place for a second here. So Abby Pattengill. Okay. Yeah. She funded like all these things. Um, in Lilydale, and I started looking at it, like in February of 1978, Willard Alden died, the guy that owned and built the original homestead on what's now the Lilydale land. And he gave it to, it went to his wife, Corintha, but she died shortly after that, like in 1892, it wasn't long after that. Then it went to Theodore Alden. He was the next one. That was Willard and Corinth's son, is what the Leolin. It was called the Alden House at the time, but that's who it ended up going to. And then he, him and his wife decided they were going to sell it. And in 1893, they sold it to John and Inez Agnew. And I found Inez Agnew many times being a speaker and a medium and stuff like that in there. Mm -hmm. They only owned it for about a year. And then in December of 1894, the Agnews sold it to Abigail Pettengill. And I found the recorded deed in Mayville. And that was January 2nd, 1895. So she had actually been a member before she had bought the property and stuff like that. I think she was on the board from like 1893 to 1906 and was president from 1903 to 1906. Not quite sure. But um, so I started looking into it really. And Abigail Pettengill was the one who funded all of the water system that runs to all the cottages in Lilydale. It was like in the 1800s, 18. The water and elect um, Henry Everett. Okay, let me go back to this. Let's start <laughs> over again for a second. You got Abigail and her sister Emily. Emily marries a doctor who loves railroads and has a son who's wicked into electricity and railroads and financing it. An incredibly talented man who had many businesses that he ran. 
during the time that she was in here, she paid for that stuff to go into Lilydale. For it to become the city of light, it was Henry Everett. It was really her sister's son. See how close they were? And they, yes. they did like all these magnificent things for Lilydale. Like, I was very amazed. I, I knew of Abigail Pattengill, but I did not know how many things. She built the post office building as a welcome center down as you come in the gate. Mm -hmm. She built the two pillars in the arch that said City of Light that was above it. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the things she built there. Um, it appears to me that the house that she built, when the description of the house is as you come through the gate, it is the most ornate building like in the Northeast. I am thinking that it's the house, the first of the three sisters where Aurora's oh. House of Light and Joy is is mm -hmm. where that house was mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you ask how did abigail pettengill even find oh yeah i've heard the story about that right she was riding on one of the everett's trains mm -hmm. going on a trip and she ran into marion skidmore who convinced her to come here yeah, so Marion Skidmore is a big name in Lilydale. In fact, the library, we the reason we have a library is because of Marion Skidmore. Correct. Because books were near and dear to her heart. And if you come to Lilydale, the, the big brick building of, of the library uh, has her name on it as well it should. And she brought a lot of people to Lilydale. She was very influential and knew Susan B. Anthony and, and had a lot of connections with various people. So I just love the fact that in the story, they, they kind of strike up a friendship immediately right. on the train. Right. And the right. next thing you know, Abigail Pettengill has come to Lilydale, and then she becomes this amazing benefactor. Exactly. Huge benefactor, really. And I never realized, like, she made us a lot what we were and drew the people in, like, along with others. But I, she made progress with getting people there. She's a mover and a shaker. And the she first was. president of, of Lilydale when women weren't first president. First female. Much first female yeah, first female yeah yeah and um the reason she uh, i i found a a thing of uh, a newspaper article from way back and what she said she was really into women's suffrage this is why abigail pattenkill uh, the quote that i had from her is very interesting this is what she said she said i paid taxes in three states while my gardener who could not read or write was making the laws for me. Mm. And the whole entire family felt that way, the men as well as the women. You know, it's I thought that was very interesting. Like that's like, a great she said that. to, to find because it's true. If, if you, here she is doing all of this and and employing people, and then she's not allowed to even vote about mm -hmm. the country and the land. So yeah. for, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, just to let you know, this is Wednesdays with Willa, and we are uncovering the mystery of who is Leolin. And my special guest today is Jennifer Roach King, and she uh, thankfully is retired. So she has devoted a lot of this time to research who is Leolin, and she's exploring that today on the show. We're so grateful. So yes, we've just been talking about Abby, Abigail Pettengill and how she is the grandmother of Leolin. Leolin was an actual person. And Abigail Pettengill was so great to uh, be the benef a, be a big benefactor of Lilydale. We'll always be grateful. So uh, these are some of the things that she did to Lilydale. Originally, well, Lilydale is an island and it's very muddy and mucky. And she had it filled in with like dirt and rocks and stuff, paid to have this stuff done. This was back in 1893 uh, when she first started uh, coming here. Um, and she had it filled in. She had a good plank walk from the depot to the grounds so that all the ladies and gentlemen going from the depot and wouldn't get as muddy. So she put like a what they called the corduroy back then, which were logs that you could walk across and made a path. Uh, like I said, the arches in the front with the iron gate. Right. Um, she made the office building um, down where the post office is, um, built the house at Aurora's. Um, 
The next year, she was also reelected, and that was like in 1894. She had the bowling alley, the two-story bowling, two bowling alley built in 1984. And that was uh, down at the Lilydale Beach area. It was, and with the four billiard tables. Okay, the whole thing. There was like an amusement park down there. As a matter of fact, it had electricity and light thanks to the Everett's, her sister, and that whole like it's amazing what I found. And then, um, let's see. And then she was reelected again in 1895 to the board, not president, but she was on the board. Um, she purchased the six acres of ground between the channel and the camp and the railroad station. They had to finance that um, like for paperwork thing. And they sold 160 shares and she bought 60 of the 160 shares. So at least a third of um, funding to get us connected to where the stage coaches and railway would stop. So we own the land in between that. Yes, um, at one point there was a train depot that would bring, deliver people directly to Lilydale just across the bridge. So that's the area correct, that I'm talking correct. about. <laughs> and it was her family. It really was. It was, it, it, it's amazing, like all the things, like way back then. Yes. Um, let's see. And then let's see. Um, the Grand Hotel, she completely renovated that. That is the Maplewood Hotel. In 1893, she completely renovated that from the ground up. Um, had it painted, papered, uh, carpeted, um, the whole thing. Um, in 1893, she also had the complete system of electric lighting, which now illuminated the grounds. Um, and it also hung in the trees as it went through the Leolin woods. Because lighting was a little different. Oh. It was brand new. Lighting was brand new back then. Mm -hmm. um, and that was in June that, that she had that done. Um, and actually, when you look her up in Who's Who, it'll tell you that she's one of the most wealthiest and generous benefactors, like in philanthropist. It's really amazing. Like, and it went all the way down her family, how they helped to make things better, you know? In a big way. In a right. big way. She put the water system and got it improved for fire protection in 1893 after there was a big fire in Lilydale. Mm -hmm. Um she wanted them to finish and supply water to all the cottages and um, uh, the depot and stuff like that had just been created for the railway. And that all happened in 1893. And that one year, that's how much money she sunk into there. Um, another thing, uh, Abigail's daughter, Josephine, who is Leolin's mother, uh, donated that organ that is in uh, the auditorium oh, the auditorium yeah. she donated yep because they were all musicians and orchestras and they planned all these like incredible things you know and those are the things that the grandmother abigail did for lily Dale. i i think they are quite significant really um Absolutely. another interesting thing i found out about she was very good friends with Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Um, and in one of the things I found, it was like an article, and it said Susan B. Anthony was looking for money to carry on a systematic campaign for women's suffrage. Um, Abigail Louise Pettengill was on the board and was the first to donate $100 um, to organize Susan B. Anthony's um, campaign for women's suffrage. Uh, the total amount that they collected for the entire campaign was $300. And so once again, she paid a full third. Um, I thought that was very, very interesting. Like they were very, very good friends. Like I found a lot of information on that. Beautiful. Okay. And then, like I said, what Josephine, so, so I'm, I'm kind of done with um, Abigail. Yeah, you're done with Abigail. I think okay. people are really curious about Leolin now. Yeah, so basically what Leolin did is she was a poet and a writer. She wrote for Life Magazine. Um, 
I started doing some research and I found a bunch of books from like 1900 on. A bunch of the books here. Just one second. <laughs> She, uh, she lived in Italy. Violin married Timothy Mather Spellman, who was a composer. And um, she was a writer. Um, she wrote for Life magazine. This is a book from the 1900s of some of the poems. These are either going to be available in the museum or um, available in the Leolin in the Welcome Center. But I've got seven of the 11 books. When she lived in Italy, she owned her own printing press and bindings. This is epilogue. Ooh, I'm not good at this. The first one I showed you was called Fawns at Prayer. And that's a collection of her poems from Life Magazine. Then she's got one uh, called the epilogue. This is another one called The Three Priests. And these are the original ones, these first four. And this is one called The Agnostics. And uh, she wrote plays with her husband. He wrote the music and she wrote the plays. Uh, this is another book that she wrote. These are not the original copies. The first four were. And that's pretty much what she did. Her husband was a composer and um, she wrote plays and poems, and they, they were very, very prominent people. They never had any kids. Um, and doing some other research, I found the repository of all of the Everett's uh, stuff. Um, when Leolin and Timothy got married, they went to Italy on their honeymoon. And on the honeymoon, they found this place, Villa Rosalini, and they ended up buying it. It's now called um, the Villa Spellman. When Timothy died and then Leolin died, they had no heirs. So I went looking for the repository of their work because they actually donated. It was Villa Rosalini that they changed to the Villa Spellman, but they donated it to Johns Hopkins University. Um, for Italian studies. But they also took all of their information, which is located at Johns Hopkins University Sheridan Libraries. And a lot of the information I got was from actual stuff that came from the repository of their information. I don't have all of the pictures yet, uh, but there's like 32 photos of the family and stuff like that in it as well. Beautiful. So you're that's you still have some research coming in, basically. I do. I'm not, <laughs> well, um, I'm not completely finished with that, as a matter of fact. It's kind of a work in progress. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So in terms of this, they, they were in Italy most of the time, but they had to come back at different junctures um, in, in time, right? So they, they weren't exclusively in Italy the rest of their lives or anything. They, they came back. They did. In the United States um, at different times. They, they only came back during the World Wars. Mm -hmm. They almost got stuck there uh, during World War I. Yeah, both World Wars, they had to come back to the United States while that was going on. Right. And they went to Brooklyn, um, very well-to-do and very well-known people. So they, they had the, the benefit of being able to have the support from family um, 
to come back to, but there's that sense of them being almost like um, immigrant, you know, they, they emigrated to another country to a large, you know, large extent. They spent most of their time there. I remember you saying yeah. that uh, the, one of her plays, was there something about a play that was actually hosted at one point too? A play that was hosted. That, that, she, that she wrote. Um, was there, wasn't there some sort of play that was like, um, like Shakespearean? Who wrote that play? Um, I remember you telling me that one of the books in one of the books that has a, a, an extensive play in it that she had written too, because she's very intelligent. She wrote many plays, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think about which one of the plays um had more of a Shakespearean tone to it but so she had she had the the benefit of knowing how to use language but why do you feel or in your research at all um wh where do you think the name Leolin came from well that's very interesting actually um because it's an unusual name it is a very unusual name originally the this is a kind of a funny story, really. I, I'll, I'll tell you briefly what happened. I was very much on a quest. What does the name Leola mean? Like, where did it come from? Like, you could search Leola. It's not a name that, that's very common. And when I saw that Leola and Timothy got married at the Leo Doro Farms, I started trying to research, which is now the Kirkland... Um, golf club, whatever. I started to research, oh, maybe they named her after the family estate. I was like, okay, so I start researching this Leodoro farm that was like this 400 acre huge estate um, that she grew up on. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find anything on it. It was the only thing called Leodoro that I could find anywhere. Thinking that like maybe the Leo came from, you know, like Leolin came from that. Sure. So this is a true story. This past Sunday night slash Monday morning at three o'clock in the morning, I wake up and it was like spirit was telling me you better not have amnesia about this. <laughs> For real. Telling me, OK, it's Leolin and Una. Look up Leona and Una. It's a boy's name. I was like, this is crazy. But this has happened to me before. So I'm like, OK. Now, I start Googling and looking here and here, and I keep searching Leolin and Una, Leolin and Una. And what do I find eventually after like probably four or five hours of like looking for a combination? And I had originally thought Spirit was saying Luna, not Una. Oh, gosh. Right? <laughs> right? So I find it, it is a play from 1811 called One O'Clock. And Leolin is the male character in the play and Una is the female character in the play. Josephine, Leolin's mother, being a playwright, loved that thing and called her Leolin. So Leolin's whole life, she used her middle name. It was Leolin Louise. And she, she did not like stray from that. So, that's from spirit. So she you was know, called Louise, Louise, basically, right? No, she went. Her wait, dad wait, wait. called her dad called her Leo and called mm -hmm. her sister Dottie. Okay. Okay. And that's why he named it Leo and then Doro for the name of his farm. But Leolin really didn't care for the boy's name. So always added Louise. And Abigail Pattengill's middle name is Louise as well. Just so that say. was kind of like an honor to her grandmother that they got the yeah. same middle name. Same middle name. Um, so <laughs> the citing to that play from 1811 is really my reference of what it is from spirit. So it was, and someone's asking, was that Queen Zenobia? Yes, Queen Zenobia. That's one of the books here. <laughs> she wrote that yes there we go that's what I was yes 
Thank you. Is that the one you were talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Her yes. most favorite one is called The Sweet Book, Poetry of Slumber. Mm -hmm. And if you look for it on YouTube, you will find other people reading it. I have not been able to attain a copy of it, but um, it is out there to listen to. Sure. I think it's it's great. And and the another, on another note, there was a a paint there is a painting of Leolin too. There is um, a spirit art painting, is it? A precipitation, a spirit spirit precipitation art. painting um that I believe Abby Louise Pettengill saw and knew that to be her knew that to be her um, right. granddaughter. Yeah. I can share a picture of that if people would like me to. I can share a picture of, of what it, it came out in the painting as. <laughs> because sometimes what people um, what people think they, they look like is not what they look like, right? Right. You never <laughs> so, know. You never know. Uh, some people are more accurate than others in terms of how they're able to convey. So that's why I always... I was would rather have it verified, but I guess Abby Louise Pettengill recognized her granddaughter when the spirit precip precip precipitation painting was made. So let me just see if I can share that with all of you real quick. Leolin also wrote the poem that was at the Leolin Inn as you entered the gate. All right, I'm gonna see whether I can share this with y'all. Oh, yes, yes, read that, please. Hell, guest. We are not. Yeah, I, oh, I maybe I'll it. read it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> the group effort. Uh, Hail, guest. We ask not what thou art. If friend, we greet thee hand and heart. If stranger, such no longer be. If foe, our love will conquer thee. <laughs> That's almost like a y'all come. <laughs> <laughs> That, that definitely has. Let me see if I can share share to this photo just so people can see what she looks like. There we go. So this is Leolin in all her beautiful hair glory, it would seem. And uh, kind of has that that look of 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 a romantic. And it, you know, the, the white rose must have had some sort of special significance that is lost at this time. We don't know if that would have been a special thing, a special part of the message for, for Abigail to have received. But yes, that's what we know at this point. I got a more current picture, like a regular picture of her. Let me see if I can, I'm not sure if it will screen share for me, but let me see. And tell, remind me again, approximately how old she would have been when she passed. Oh, how, have been. oh, oh there she, we go. Let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, that's a great picture. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, that's Leolin and mm -hmm. um, Timothy. And then. Uh, so, brother, no, husband. No, that's her husband. husband that's her husband. husband. I, was I was like, wait, no. So husband and wife for this. I like her hat. You know, the, the hats they had back then are so cool. And then this is Leolin's signature um, from a passport from 1915. I can't see her passport yet. We're still on the photo. You may have to uh, jump out of this screen share and do the next, do the next as a separate. Let's see here. Can you see that now? That's from her passport. <laughs> right? You were able to snag that. And I'm trying For to anybody who's a handwriting expert out there, have fun. Isn't that kind of cool? I, yeah. I thought that was, uh, I've got, um, I've got a picture of the Kirtland Country Club, which is where they got married, where uh, the Everett's, let's see here, let me get rid of the other one. Screen 
That's where Henry and Josephine lived. Wow. And it's now um, a country club, the Kirtland Country Club. Wow. Now, I remember you telling me just as um, a point for people that that Leolin preferred her grandmother. She didn't like her mother, Josephine, very much. Um, points. There was that she, there were some tensions there. There was. She loved her dad, but she did not really care for her mother. I've actually got it. It's in the Spellman papers, which are the papers that I got from, let's see here. Leolin describes her parents. Let me see if I can share this. Share screen. Leolin describes her parents. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yep, but she was what? born in Cleveland on August yeah. 5th. Okay. Uh, she was admitted at age 10 to Cleveland School. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was admitted at the age of 10 to Cleveland Hathaway Brown School. When Leolin later wrote about her childhood, the material comforts were always overshadowed by contrasting impressions of her parents, a cruel and wicked mother and an adored father. You know, I, that's, that was kind of her perspective on it. And she but loved her grandmother. But Josephine had written plays too. And I find it very interesting that Leolin did a lot of that. And, and, and as it says here, she was the editor of the school's literary journal. And you know her early writing abilities were obviously noticed by people yes. in a young age. Yeah, 10, 10 years old. Yes. So that when she was she was there. Now, isn't that interesting? It says the following winter in New York, she was, after she'd been in uh, Naples, Italy, she was introduced to Timothy Mather Spellman. So she hadn't met her first cousin yet until until um, she was older. I uh, find no, that kind of odd. no. We Leolin um, married a composer. It was her mom and dad that were first cousins. We oh, okay, parents. that's what it was. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. yeah. I'm already getting confused. Yeah. <laughs> No, Leolin. Um, you're here. Yeah, Leolin just uh, he, she married Timothy Mather Spellman, and they loved writing things together and composing and doing stuff like that. Yeah, so that's what that's, they yeah. they had as their many projects. It would seem. Oh yes. So there, there it is. Yeah, she died. She died uh, like a year after him after her husband. Well, this has been fascinating to kind of have a, a dive into who is Leola. And I think we've, you've been able to answer a lot of questions for people as far as the background and the family history and the interweavings of that with Lily Dale and how important it was. And I remember you and I were talking about this before, before this show in preparation that um, Abby Louise P Pettengill would, did this for her, her family members. She would, you know, put money toward a building or, or a place, and then it would be named such and such. That was Absolutely. a common thing for benefactors. Absolutely. To pick a name. Yeah, and it was kind of a family effort, really. It was Abigail and her sister, Emily, mm -hmm. and then it was Henry and Josephine. You know, all four of them, really, that's two generations. Um, really, they helped to bring the traffic, you know, making it easy for people to get there, had the railway stops, you know, put in the water, in the sewer, in the lighting. Like, the things I came across, I was like, I didn't know, like, one person had that much to do with that. Well, it, it does. Sometimes it does take just a, a person adding their their um, financial support or emotional support or physical support. 
uh, to make something happen. And we're grateful to all the people who are benefactors of Lily Dale. And certainly you can always keep that in mind if anybody would like to do something. Uh, there's always maintenance to be done. As Abby Louise Pettengill noticed, <laughs> there's always maintenance to be done. And we're, we're, we're looking at a water project and some new gas lines and things like that. So we're so grateful for anybody who wants to help with infrastructure or anybody who wants to help uh, maintain buildings. Lily Dell is, is in, in need of those things. So yes, ours are from eight. Yeah, ours are from 1893. <laughs> and that's way too long <laughs> to go without uh, new things. So uh, now this has been so great, Niff. I really appreciate you coming on the show today and, and, and being so generous to share your research with us. And I know some other pieces will come together for you, but you've got this big chunk of information about this family. And it's, it's great to be able to highlight them uh, on the show. I really appreciate that so much, Neff. That's beautiful. Thank you for having me, Willa. Yeah, you're so, so welcome. Oh, and before I forget, I, I do have, um, for those who are interested in my mediumship development circles, if you would like to attend, I have a new series starting up. It's uh, Mondays in November. So you're going to want to reserve your spot because our first uh, night of, of that circle is on November 1st. You can find information about that on my website and on my Facebook page, Willow White Medium. And I encourage you to look uh, uh, and, and, and view this later on if you need some more information. NIF gave some great family trees, uh, tree, tree information, and um, some of the exactness of that is, was really needed for our presentation today. And next week, I have as my special guest, um, Sandy Harley, who is uh, with Chautauqua Hospice and Palliative Care. We're going to be talking about the comfort of palliative care. I've had experiences as a hospice volunteer and she's worked extensively through the years with hospice. And people will have their different stories about hospice and, and the, the beautiful things that can come of helping someone in those end of life stages. And that's something that's so important that comes up frequently in readings that I have with clients, uh, what it was like for them at the end of life. And hospice does really do their best to provide comfort um, to the caregivers and also to the people who are experiencing those things. So thank you everyone for your kind attention. Hope you enjoyed. Who is Leolin? We now have the answer. Bye-bye everyone. <laughs>